Hello everybody, welcome to Cat and Beats and welcome to a video about Ozone 9. Uh, now this channel is actually only for mixing and mastering in the box where we you know, show everything and have a good time uh, doing it with different plugins. Uh, but this time around I wanted to specifically look at Ozone 9, not only because it dropped yesterday and I'm a fanboy, but something happened that annoyed me and that is that um, on all the sponsored videos that Ozone you know, put out for content creators, everybody just kind of forgot to turn on Game Match. Also on Ozone's uh, feature videos, Game Match is turned off. And that's really annoying because it's one of my favorite little buttons. Because with Game Match, you can match all your processing, click on bypass, and then see if what you're doing is actually helping the song or if it's just uh, making a difference, you know? So let's go through the features together with gain match turned on. And this is for everybody else who is just as annoyed as I was that that happened. It's probably about three people. Anyway, uh, let's just uh, check out the, the, the new things here. We got the master rebalance. We got low end focus. We got uh, match EQ. And then with the equalizer, there's some new things as well. But we'll, we'll check those out in a bit. Uh, first things first, match EQ. It's not new. I think it's been around since Ozone 4 when I was first starting to use this uh, suite, which is really nice. What we can do here is we can capture a little bit of uh, a reference song, and then after that you can capture your own song. Now, I don't have any monetization turned on, so enjoy Disclosure and hi Disclosure if you ever see this and wonder why your video is here. And for the people who noticed, yes, this is an MP3. Um, now, let's capture uh, our track that still needs to be mixed. All right, perfect. So now what we can do is we can check out the little uh, orange line, which is actually the uh, version of Disclosure, and then our track, which is then, uh, well, our track. So let's just use this amount knob and kind of accentuate it, and let's just use the smoothening. Okay, so what you can tell already is that we have a beautiful smiley face EQ, and you know, to the untrained ear, our track, currently has a lot of uh, mid-range going love it, 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 it. Now, where I find this is cool is that you can also mid-side this. So this is actually something a little bit new for me. Uh, so you can mid-side a reference and then also check the side. How cool is that? So you got mid, which is lots of top end added and side, which is pretty smooth overall. See that? Actually, oh no, wait. Check this out, you have 83.44, and then you have to change that here as well. Uh, that's a bit annoying. Okay, so now we can check both mid-side, and we can see that both mid-side have been used kind of the same way. Okay, so that feature either doesn't work, or MP3s do really suck. So let's move on. Um, good to know that there is more bass and more top end, and a beautiful smiley face EQ. It kind of tells me already what kind of EQing I can do to match it if I would just master this instead of mix it. Next up is the master rebalance. Now this thing caught my eye immediately because I was like, ooh, does this actually work? So let's misuse it and go absolutely insane and let's pretend that we want the vocals even louder than they already are. Wow. Okay, let's turn on the, the bypass control. So what it does, it, it does introduce a little bit of, uh, of an artifact. It really um, puts like emphasis on the love, like I can't sing for shit. Love when it comes up really loud, but when like the, the word dies out, uh, then the the gain APD stuff doesn't work as much anymore. So see it more as a compressor on the vocals with a slow attack and a fast release. Very slow attack and a 
medium release. Yeah. So then we have like the ah, and then when it turns down, it goes away. So that's cool to know. Let's check it out on bass. Okay, just swamp the bass. That's nice. Um, okay, so this is a, it's it's it really focuses on bass. It doesn't uh, actually affect the kick drum that much. Let's just gain match. That. Let's just bypass that. Okay. That's pretty cool. That's a cool little trick there. Um, so the kick drum is still coming through. The bass is literally turned down. And the kick drum low end is still coming through as well. So that's pretty, pretty neat. Uh, definitely if, you know, instead of sending the, you know, telling the mastering engineer or the producer, hey, can you turn down the bass? You can just sneakily do that here. That actually works. Drums, uh, let's make it super loud, see what happens. That's pretty cool, that works. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, I like the that there's one little knob for this so that you can automate it overall uh, here and there. And it's definitely nice to, to have this little function. So updating wise, this is nice if you don't want to continuously go back and forth your mix and or uh, producer and or mixing engineer to just say like, dude, can you just turn it down 0.9 dB? And you can actually automate. I think that's that's just that's just really great to automate this. It's yeah, pretty cool. But introduces some artifacts. Okay, next up, we have low end focus. Um, so this well, let's have a listen. You hear a difference? I don't hear a difference. Okay. Okay, so um, this is like multi-band dynamics uh, where you do upward compression and a little bit of downward compression at the same time and then you can control the amount of oomph or less oomph. Let's try smooth. Okay, so this is slower attack and release settings, and this is faster. Um, let's try a little bit of actual low end where you would actually use this, and let's smoothen this this track out uh, and have that v v v type of sound. Bypass. Let's put that into mid side mode and only put mid. That's actually pretty nice. That actually works. Uh, and it's not as extreme as I thought it would be. So you can pretty push this pretty hard, at least for the first time being here that I'm checking this. Uh, let, next up, let's check out the equalizer uh, where we have buttons, uh, but we also have digital button because if you press the digital button, you can open this up and you can then change your phase alignment, which is really nice. Uh, specifically, if you start low cutting, uh, do, 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 do. low high pass flat resonant let's do brick wall okay this and then we can change the phase alignment so in case some sometimes when you cut low end what will happen is you get a little bit of like <laughs> that type of sound coming through um and i think they show it as well you see this so when you low cut really heavily wait that's actually pretty cool you can see that 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 bump here, well, it's really small, but right. I don't know if you can see that, but it's like, like it's moving up and down. So that has like some phasing issues and some problems. Um, that's not brick wall. Let's check it with a flat one. 
See, you can see it coming in. So that's actually really cool. Uh, happy to check that and see that. However, with digital and I want to cut it, this is kind of weird that it's already cutting quite significantly at 46 hertz. Um, and to be honest, I have a lot more low end than that. So let's try that. Yeah, so that's kind of weird. So at 44 hertz, it starts cutting pretty significant. So we have a minus 6 dB. Yeah, that's 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 pretty annoying because sometimes kick drums have you know 30, 30 something hertz, and it's just nice to have that oomph in there without having to do this crazy stuff and having this thing here. So yeah. I will definitely be using the analog mode for that um, if there needs to be cutting and then just accept the farts that happen. Now, next up is there is an imager uh, new mode called number two or velvet noise decorrelation. I don't know what that is. And we have the haze effect over here. So what I've noticed about this mix in particular current as, as it is, is that the middle band has um, the vocal is extremely mono. So let's just push that out of its comfort zone and let's bypass the normal way you would use the imager if you're using it. And now let's check out the difference between mode number one and mode number two. Oh wow. Oh wow. Okay, so basically mode number two, um, it leaves the vocals still in the middle with the what, mode number one. What would happen is I would I'd get my left and my right channel and they would just kind of go like this. And it would just sound a little bit over the top. So if I would do anything imaging wise, it would be minimal amount because I personally don't like the uh, that that type of sound. Uh, means inside out uh, type of sound. That's the sound effect that happens when you turn inside out. And this one is actually quite sexy. You can even see the difference on this uh, vector scope here. If you look at the correlation meter, see, so the little dots over there and it shoots underneath as well. And with this one, it stays up here. You really have to push it. Wow, that's really impressive. Yeah. Okay, so definitely mode number two for me is something new and a very welcomed new thing there. Uh, let's see what else is new. Match EQ, Spectral Shaper. So everything else is pretty much the same, except for the Master Assistant. So uh, I put in the uh, Disclosure track there. That's the reference. And let's click on Vintage for fun's sake. And let's click on CD, no, on Streaming. And click on Next. And click on Play and let it play through. <laughs> About to get very loud. <laughs> cool. Uh, I noticed this this vintage limiter, which was put on with the ceiling as well. Uh, that's pretty cool. I'm just gonna gain match. Turn this off for a second. <laughs> Okay, interesting. Uh, sorry for blasting your ear there. So An 
interesting, interesting. I, 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 I'm, uh, I'm a little bit on the fence about that one. Then we have the, the vintage EQ, which is the normal EQ, and you can see that they are cutting the top. Okay, and this is all according to the reference. Remember that. So, yeah, that's really interesting. Mid side, did they do anything? Oh no, mid side. So it's just a stereo. Uh, version top is being added so it's what i find a little bit weird is that from the um yeah okay so this is definitely there for by the way that that noise that's my dog he's annoyed with me um so this is there because of that uh that cut because i'm using an mp3 this is being pushed because it wants top end and this is being pulled there okay cool I was just kind of wondering if they were going to add this as well to make that massive smiley face EQ because that's kind of where we were going. Um, okay, so that didn't happen. Compressor is not turned on because there's no stream stuff. Let's try out the Master Assistant with Modern as well. And let's go manual and let's go high intensity and check that for streaming. Okay, so that's cool. It's still the same stuff, uh, and it's bumping a little bit of low mid, taking getting the top. Okay, so personally, I never use the master assistant for uh, anything except for this dynamic EQ part, because I like having that transparent limiter feel, so that all those really hard ticky sounds. See that that main problem that we had to begin with, but uh, that they get taken care of so we have a bit of a de-esser going on but then also de-essing in other problem frequencies that would really mess with my limiter and get my limiter to go whack whack the whole time uh i think that is about everything uh that we needed to check uh regarding the uh the thing here oh we can reference the thing oh that is very cool uh there's a reference button there and yeah, oh yeah, I think the, the biggest update for me is check this out. So normally you were only allowed to have five modules, right? You would have to open up a new one. Guess what? You can have every single module open if you wanted to. You can just keep on going. How cool is that? So that for me is definitely worth it to upgrade. So personally, uh, I think that uh, I will be upgrading um, in a bit. And I think the biggest reason is this little imager because that's going to help me out a lot. And let's see what else. I think that's pretty much it. I, I, oh yeah, the rebalance part is really, really nice as well. So these two things are the reason I would upgrade. So if you're not looking for these two things, maybe something else will help you out. But for me, these two things are pretty good. They also changed the name from Equalizer 1 and Equalizer 2 from Equalizer and post equalization that's it so have a good one i hope you've enjoyed the video <laughs> and sorry if this is not the usual thing you see in this channel but you know i just had to have that gain match on take care guys